Hello, my lovely sewing friends. As promised, today I'm going to show you part one of my garments I've sewn in the past year. So today we have a good selection of dresses, tops, skirts and one fur jacket. So, yeah, not lying, one fur jacket. So, Mm, where to start? And let's face it, most of my garments are, are going to be Vicky Sews um, for the reason that they draft in different heights and I find it that their garments in my height fit me extremely well, like so well, like they've literally been made for me. So just to prepare you, <laughs> there are going to be a couple of non Vicky Sews patterns, but most of them are, but I will be calling them out as I go. So, let's start with what I'm wearing. And what I'm wearing is a Vicky Sew's Nikki top, which is free. It's a free pattern. This is the height. Um, this is the length of it. So just about this long, just about to sit at the top of your hip bone. Um, it has relaxed fits. Um, I love the sleeve. I mean, look at the length of the sleeve. I like longer, longer sleeves as well. But as as I straighten my arms, it just sits like at the perfect height. But when I put my my hand down, I'm just gonna hold it like this. This is this is where it sits. I don't think I've actually. I need to actually. I need to. I should have checked whether I've gotten myself a longer, longer length. But I'm pretty sure because they're very forward, so they do a lot of like slight oversize. Um, so always, always check your measurements and the sleeve lengths because everything's indicated on the pattern page on on their platform. Okay, so this is Nikki. I just wanted to say that I've made it with um, a fabric that I've gotten at the. Um, Stitching Expo in London last year where I went to with Pipskilu and it's a viscose mix um, Viscose mix with polyester And it has a really nice stretch. It's quite I Think it's like a medium weight, but it's very Soft so it's quite flowy. You know, you can you can see how nice and fluidy it is and it's really good um has a really nice feel on your skin so i like to sometimes wear it on just on top of my underwear because today i'm wearing it over a like a little um tank top but i sometimes i just wear it on its own um, and it's really nice it's quite absorbent and it just feels nice and cool and very cozy now, I don't remember the company I bought the fabric from, but I'm sure you probably find a very similar fabric on the internet. So this one is a very light pink, almost like a watered down kind of pink color. Um, so I've made two knit tops. Let me just get the second one for you. This one I've made out of just a plain t-shirt in fabric so it looks like so you, you you can see a nice you can get a good idea of what the fit is like because I'm holding this one in my hands so this fabric is just literally this is the uh, the t-shirt in fabric looks like this um, and Hobbycraft has these um, payette sloths and obviously as you gathered from my name of my vlog I have a bit of a thing about sloths so you know why wouldn't I want to put one on it so every time I wash this I take him off so this time I washed, I washed the t-shirt I washed the top I took the sloth off before I did that so now I kind of thinned it so I need to stitch it back in place with temporary stitches for me to wear it so that's that so it's very easy pattern it comes together easily um yeah there's no complications whatsoever 
um, I overlocked the hems of the sleeves and the bottom hem um, and I just kind of stitched it with what is this? I actually used a lightning stitch I will find an image and I'll show it to you. I use it quite a lot for um, knit garments actually. I find it to be quite useful and it almost looks like a normal stitch but it's not. Um, so the neckline, what's the neckline? Yeah, has been literally bound with neck binding. This is on the inside. Honestly, this comes together ever so quickly. Um, and that's why I made two. But don't get me started on making doubles because I'm just about to jump on to a triple garment um, <laughs> that I've made for one pattern. So, right, this is Nikki top. It's free on Vicky So's website. It's a great opportunity for you to go and try out their patterns without having to buy to pay for them. So um, go and check it out. I find this um, pattern to be very current and easy to make. So you can make yourself loads of different ones even out of sparkly fabrics. So this is something you could wear with a sparkly make with a sparkly fabric and wear with like leather trousers um you know something to think about so anyway this is it on to the next one now did i say i've made something three times lying because i've made this one particular pattern four times now four times and as I was selecting it for this part of um, Sew and Tell, I knew it was four times. Why did I say three? I don't know. I've made it four times. So the first dress I've made... Oh, all right. And the pattern is Hazel. Hazel by Vicky Sews. It's basically a stretch, long dress, just very plain dress with long sleeve. The only catchy detail is off the shoulder, big off the shoulder band that you get on top of your dress. So the first one I made, I think I briefly mentioned it in one of my last year's vlogs, but I'll do it again. So it's the fabric I had from the textile center. Yes, the textile center. And I suspect it's viscose mix with something. So it's very heavy. Let me just show you the hem because it's not doubled there. So it's like this. And it's like this on the wrong side. And it's quite um it's quite substantial weight to it. It's very pleasant, like a heavy-ish medium weight. Um it was wonderful to sew with, wonderful to you know, work with, cut it out, pin everything. It was fantastic. And I can't I can't say that it's a complicated garment because it isn't. What I'm gonna say is um on Vicky So's portal on their sides, they show that you can actually wear it as a hood. Um because it is quite long. But I know that I'm not going to wear it as a hood. I think maybe if I make, made it longer, maybe I would have. And so that would then affect which side would your seam that you attach your um, band to would go on. Whether it goes on the, on the right side of your dress, like I did, or whether it goes on... The wrong side of your dress so to me because I knew I would be wearing this band down so to me it was only logical that I would put my seam underneath it on the right side so that you would fold over it and if it ever kind of rolled a little bit you wouldn't see the ugly 
you know, overlocker seam on the outside. So this is how I did it. I haven't worn this dress yet. <laughs> I don't know what occasion I would be wearing it to. I can kind of visualize some sort of summer outing, perhaps like a dinner, although I probably shouldn't be eating anything red <laughs> or brown or, mm, I don't know, purple or any green, any color really. Um, probably like white wine and pasta with no sauces and, or like dry bread, you know. <laughs> um, Mm, yes, so um, maybe I just I'm just gonna wear it at home and not eat or drink. I don't know But that is the first dress I made from this pattern and I loved it so much that I immediately asked Minerva for their fabric um, I think it's their own fabric. So the second dress I made straight away is exactly the same dress made with Minerva textured cotton, I want to call it textured cotton knit and it's it looks like this and it's gorgeous, oh it's a gorgeous, very stretchy, very stretchy um, again let me just show you the hem because it's just one single layer so it's like this very nice is that and then this is what it looks like on the inside yeah and again the sleeve hems I finished this fabric with a triple zigzag it's still very stretchy but because the fabric is so structured it actually kind of gets lost in all those little squares, on all, all those little loops. Um, again, as with the previous dress, I left uh, the seam that attaches the shoulder band onto the main garment on the outside of the garment, so that when I fold it over, like this, it's all nice and hidden. And even if I decide to bear a bit more shoulder and this rolls over, you will not be seeing any of the seams. So this dress I did wear a couple of times and it's super, super comfortable. It's very comfortable. And I find it that, um, I don't know, I just, I just love the drafting. I just love the fit. So uh, the sleeves are quite long as well. I think the sleeve comes on like this, but I'll be making a video and popping it on one of the sides so you'll see for yourself. But um, love this pattern. So, love this pattern so much that when the time came to have my new company's Christmas do, which I organized, hmm. um, I've decided to make another hazel dress in a sparkly, shimmery, black jersey fabric. So I got it from Fabworks and I've used this fabric before and that's how I knew that I really, really loved it because in one of my previous videos when I was doing sew and tell, I did a don't ask me what it's called. Vicky sews cardigan and it's quite a loose long cardigan. So I've worked with this fabric before and it's lovely. Um, now hopefully you'll be able to see the sparkle. Yeah, you can see it. So um, I don't know if they still have this fabric or not, but I was really happy to know that um, like a year later, I went onto their websites. They still had a little bit of this fabric there. So I got two and a half meters of it and I cut myself another hazel dress. And let me just tell you, I felt like a million bucks, like a million pounds, like a million of whatever currency is, you know, trending in your country. <laughs> I felt like a million of that. Um, now with this dress, for whatever reason, I'm going to say 
I could have said it was intentional, but it wasn't. I think because I was in a hurry, I actually put uh, the seam <laughs> um, on the inside of a dress, which wasn't a problem at all. Perhaps I thought that maybe I would wear it like there's a loose cowl neck, which is kind of a way to do it. I'm gonna style it, tr try to style it different ways and see how it looks on a video for you. Um, the only thing I'm gonna say about it is that it's like just from where, when I was showing you. Do you see all these sparkles, black sparkles? My whole room was covered in sparkles. My face was sparkling and my like hands like underneath my nails. Everything in the room is still to this day when I move things around. I was like, oh, what is that? And I find these sparkles. I don't know how they end up traveling everywhere, but they just, I don't know. It's like, it's like a magical fabric, basically. Um, let's just hope that all those things are going to grow themselves into a meter of fabric each, you know, and that way I don't mind, I guess. Um, what's it called? Spores, you know? <laughs> It's like um, special um, nature laws in my sewing room that don't apply anywhere else. Some people wish for the monies to grow on tree, but for me it's to, um, you know, fabric spores and fabric growing itself in my room. Hey, everybody to their own. Anyway, this is the sides of the dresses. This is a dressy, dressy one. Um, I'm gonna wear it again, and it doesn't have to be a Christmas party or any celebration. I think any nice dinner um, would kind of call for this kind of dress, and it, it wouldn't be too much because it's so simplistic in its design that it would not be a problem at all. What's going on with our battery? Can't see it, but hopefully there's still enough. Right, cracking on to Hazel number four. Grow, grow. Did you miss my craziness? <laughs> and so the fourth one is again a Minerva gifted fabric in exchange for the blog. Um, is a black one again, but this time it's a ribbing fabric. It's just a black ribbing fabric. Let's see where I put the seam. This time I put the seam as per the usual one, usual place, is on the outside of a garment so that um, your neck piece falls over it. This fabric is rather loose, it's very stretchy, obviously you can tell. I didn't finish, I didn't finish uh, the um, hem. I didn't finish the raw edges, I literally just left them raw, same as with the sleeve. So the sleeve is raw and it actually looks okay. It does not offend me. I look at it and I don't think, oh, I should have finished it because trust me, if I looked at it and I thought it looks unfinished, I would have. Um, yeah, what am I going to say about this pattern is there's no complicated moments for me. The only thing is it tells you that you need to put elastic, like a clear elastic, along the seam that attaches the main, the garment neckline to the band. I used clear elastic in all my three previous ones. In this one I decided to use just a clear, just a black, just plain black elastic and it's absolutely fine and what I also did it gives you a pattern piece that you measure your elastic against but because clear elastic is less stretchy is more stabilizing this black elastic is actually stretchy so it carries a slightly different function so what I did is I basted it and then I put it over my shoulders and I tried it for fits and then when I was happy then I kind of stitched it in and I overlocked over it. Mm. 
but yeah, again, this one I haven't worn anywhere. Um, I think because it's also like an open shoulder, it's not like you can put it on in the winter and put a jacket over it because it's not very comfortable. I think these dresses call for just open shoulder look and nothing nothing over the top. Um, so I'm going to wait for the summer or spring or whatever and just wear it like that. But I'm very pleased and um, in fact, if you are following the trends and you know to see what's going on on the runways and stuff like that this is one of the trends is off shoulder like a bandeau or Bridget Bardo um, neckline or whatever they call it so this is one of the trends this year so I'm very much on trend <laughs> with four of my hazels um, two of which I haven't even worn yet so I have a lot of wearing to do which is always great it almost feels like you pulling out a brand new item that you just bought for you just brought from the shop and you're about to wear it so I'm super excited anyway these are my four repeats of the same pattern now let's move on to another double repeat another one of my favorites is a Vicky Sews Alison dress I'll pop you a pattern cover on the side here and this is my version Dress number one, I made with a stretch, I'm gonna call it, is it jacquard knit? That has like a different weave pattern on the insides. Is a jacquard knit, isn't it? Please correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm just making things up as I go, usually. <laughs> um, but it looks like this um, on the outside. It has a bit of a texture to it. And then on the inside it looks like this so you can actually see where the um, threads have been interlocking and it's not hasn't been painted it's actually been created this pattern by weaving the threads over each other so this fabric I got from extra fabric center and they do have a couple of similar ones but I feel like I almost bought another one but I felt like it would look like the same dress um, because it's a very similar colorway and very similar pattern. So if it was in a different colorway, I'd be making another dress right now. But um, this dress I wear on the days where I want to look smart. I made... Um, I didn't make the shoulder pads, but I took the shoulder pads that I had and I covered them with um, the fabric. Of the dress and I, I pop, pop them in and they give me that little, tiny little bit of the 80s look that is quite fashionable at the moment and on a dress where we have like a board meeting or some important meeting and I have to look all presentable I just wear this and it just oh my god it's so comfortable um, super comfortable and it looks very very smart it, it looks like a woven dress but it's actually knit so um, another thing is it has a, let me just stick my hand in. <laughs> it has a finger hole, <laughs> a hole for a finger built in in the pattern. So now I've made, this is the first one I've made and I found that it's located too high. So for me you'd be perfect if it was moved from here to here which I did in the next dress which I'll show you in a minute but at the moment I'm not using this. I'm not using this one although it would be really easy to fix it's like literally I could just unpick this bit here and sew in a little bit from the other side but I'm just I just can't be bothered to be honest and the sleeves are very lovely kind of longish lengths um, but that's the whole idea because it, it goes like over this area so that your finger fits so it looks like a little bit like um I don't know, like a mit not a mitten, like a fingerless glove, you know, I just love that look. Very cute detail, which you can actually incorporate into any, any of your knit garments. Just lengthen your sleeve a little bit and just do that. Maybe I should do a tutorial. Hmm, hold on. <laughs> Let me write that down. Oh, I'm so resourceful. So, um, what else do I say about this dress? So. Um, the bottoms of the sleeves are bound with the binding 
and the neckline actually I chose to do something different on this dress I chose to do the full binding although the instruction um, asks for you to do like a little bit of a little bit of deconstructed look but I chose to do a clean finish on this dress and this is how I envisage it because I had to pay the tribute to the fabric because it's just so dressy so it had to be a more kind of finished. The next dress is a little bit of a disaster. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to repeat the success of the previous dress which I kind of did. The only problem is this dress I can't really put it on properly. And the reason for that is the, the, the fabric I chose is a ponte, which is, is gorgeous color. And let, let's face it, this color is very me, which is funny enough because it doesn't suit many people. It doesn't suit very many complexions, but me, it makes me look quite fresh, <laughs> weirdly enough. Um, so I chose this fabric for the color and I thought, it's like a dark burgundy, kind of aubergine, kind of burgundy. Um, fabric. Um, so I went for this color and I made the dress and as I'm making it I'm like oh, I can't wait to finish this so I can wear it because I've made it before and I've worn it before so I know it's gonna fit me right. So I finished the dress <laughs> nearly and I put it on and I can't I can't put my bicep part of the arms through the freaking sleeves so I can put it through but it kind of is not very loose and when I say not very loose it means super tight <laughs> so tight I can't turn it so the way I put it on and it's just like this right and it just like stays like this like literally I'm just like this so I tell you now if I lose or when I lose a little bit more weight it's gonna fit me like mm, like perfect but at the moment <laughs> It's just a tiny tad um, tight on my arms. And, and so that's not even the problem. The problem was that as I was um, doing the hems, let me show you the hems. So this is how the pattern calls to have your hem finishes. So it has a bit of a deconstructed look and you're supposed to actually fluff this up so that it's more like a fluffed up, which I am yet to do, this bit here. And the same on your, on your neckline. So you have raw edge and then you have um, your neckline finished in this manner and this is supposed to be like all fluffy I don't know I don't know if I'm going to fluff it up or not because it looks fine 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 to me so as I was finishing the neckline and overlocking bits and bobs I've realized that I cut a tiny little hole on in the middle of one of my boobs in a dress and as I was trying it on in a black underwear, I didn't even notice it. But as I tried it on another time, just to see if the sleeves fit, mm, spoiler, <laughs> not. Um, I've noticed a little white. I was like, "What is that?" And it's like a little white dot. It's like a little hole in there. So I tried to fix the hole with a little bit of interfacing and it was absolutely fine except that when I was pressing it it fluffed up funnily enough it doesn't fluff up on top here but it fluffed up in there and it became even more noticeable so anyway, so I've decided to do like a like a lettuce you know like a applique piece on top of my boobage area to cover a tiny little hole which was very noticeable so instead of this ready <laughs> oh hi <laughs> I don't know if you can see anyway um I was thinking what to put on there 
and all I could think of is Ohai mainly because it's about four letters and it kind of fit evenly <laughs> and I still have to stitch the actual applique because I did that piece with letters separately and I just basted it on top just to see the position on it and it's fine so I just need to do that and as soon as I do that and lose some weight I can actually wear the dress which you don't even know I might never I might never wear it you know um, at this rate but hey you know don't lose hope um, hello <laughs> so oh um, again, for this dress, I covered some lovely, lovely shoulder pads. <laughs> um, so I covered some shoulder pads um, and I popped them in there and they kind of look okay. So that's that. That's another dress. So now I have two. I'm wearing one a lot. Hopefully we'll be wearing this a lot, which will be more sporty, um, kind of casual dress which I'll probably wear on a casual day to work potentially um, but it does fit ever so nicely and I find that this neckline which is squoval <laughs> like a squarey oval neckline is uh, very flattering on me so no doubt I'll be making more dresses like this um, and perhaps even this particular one um, and I will mm, most likely make sure that the fabric is more suitable um, such as has more stretch in it so that I don't have to plan to wear it when my weight changes, I can wear it straight away. So again, this is the finish of the sleeve. This is the finish that is indicated in the pattern. You can see my um, clear elastic picking through. That's it. And oh hi. Now I'm going to talk about three bottoms for this part. I'm going to start with these trousers. These are beautiful cobalt slightly flared leg trousers I will model them for you as per usual this is made of triple crepe a lovely lovely triple crepe that I absolutely adore um, the bottom hem has been hand picked you know I like leaving my basin stitches in there only because you can't see them, but it's been hand-picked um, actually to not show um, on the outside and I've modified this pattern, it was originally a high-waisted I want to say like a paperback pattern of some sort, I'll find you the technical drawing for it but I wanted to have it just slightly below the natural waist only to replicate the pair of Zara trousers that I have in black that I've been wearing all the time and I thought, you know what, I need to make more of them and this is basically pretty much what it is um, what they made in Zara um, now with the, the zip I first wanted to do the actual fly front and then, in the end, I thought, you know what, I don't want to do that. Why do I need to do that when I can just actually do very easy concealed zip, right? Wrong. <laughs> I've installed the first zip. What was wrong with it? Something was wrong with it. The first zip I had to take out because of something. I don't remember what it was. I put in the second zip and a freaking zip little dinghy, um... I, when I get like irritated, I forget all my words. Um, the dinghy is called a uh, pool, the zip pool. Fell off, and I, I was like, "Are you kidding me?" 
So I had to find like a little string of leather, you know, leather that you, you use for making like little accessories and stuff. So I put that little leather and I knotted it many, many, many times. So I made like a little pulling thing and it was, it's just literally just pain in my neck. So I pulled it out and then eventually I just, I didn't have any matching one. So I just bought myself like a dark zipper and I popped it in there. And I made a right mess out of it. And do you know what? I always, always show you my beautiful work and you're like, oh, you're so good. Look at your perfect sewing. Okay. I'm going to show you this. First, I'm going to show you like slightly scary <laughs> bits. And then I'm going to turn it over. Look at this. So I was replacing the zip and this is what it looks on the inside. It works. It works perfectly unzips it zips up it's perfect once i went to a massage session and i couldn't even pull i couldn't pull it up so i literally thought i would be walking home was like holding my trousers up but i managed to do it and after that i was like screw it i'm just gonna take it out and replace it or just chuck it in a bin <laughs> um so i replaced it so at the end of the day as long as it matches each here with me wearing the longish tops <sighs> i don't even see that but yes this is the this is the beautiful work um, that I'm showing you too, okay? Anyway, Bruni trousers, lovely addition to my basic wardrobe, goes with everything. It flows beautifully when I walk. I had so many compliments on this pair of trousers specifically at work. It's every time, literally every time I wear them, somebody says, oh, I love your trousers. Um, I have been known to be threatened by somebody to steal them off me, <laughs> literally off my body, hopefully not dead. <laughs> oh. Anyway, so this skirt is a helper sew Leo skirt and the reason I chose this pattern is because it's not bias cut so i know that these kind of satin skirts are very much in at the moment and i would love to have one except that bias cut garments look horrible on me like bad bad and every time I make one, I think I've done a couple, and every time I do that, I'm thinking, why, why did I do this to myself again? So I kind of wanted to have a look of a satin skirt, like a bias skirt, but I didn't want for it to be cut and bias. So the reason I, I chose this is because it's cut on a straight grain, thank you very much. And I've made it with a, um, I had an off cut. I don't know how long you're following me for, but I had like donkeys like, ages ago, a couple of years ago now, I've made a set of so over it um, um, carry trousers and deer and doe, ooh, like a tuxedo kind of style top out of this fabric. And this fabric I got from the textile center ages ago and it's really this gorgeous gorgeous satin like a matte satin like a medium weight proper medium weight satin with irregular polka dots and it's very flowy um i'm gonna say it's polyester 100 percent polyester it's just really pretty. I love the way it feels. Um, and now I've used up all of the fabric. And in fact, I'll probably be able to wear this skirt with the top. Um, I'll pull you out some pictures if I find them on my laptop, if I still have them. Um, but this skirt is really good substitute to a bias, bias skirt. Um, it's easy to make. It has only three, four, like four bits to it, you know, three panels and, what am I trying to say? 
what's it called? A waistband. <laughs> I'm tired. So yes, I wore this skirt with another top I made, which are not in this video, in my next video I'll be covering that one. Um, for my birthday. And I felt super glum. I can tell you that. So there you go. This is a Leo skirt. Um, oh, and I'm pretty sure that I made a little story on this skirt as well, just twirling around. If you follow me on Instagram, sloss.and.orchids, go check it out. Uh, I save my stories into little folders. You know, you have little round little folders underneath your head of head of your um, page. Just go in there and search for it. It's quite recent, so you won't have to look too far. So, there you go. That's the Leo. And this is my pride and joy. Um, this is Vicky Sills Blake for leather skirts. This is the first time um, that I worked with faux leather. This fabric I've gotten from Rainbow Fabrics. And I'm pretty sure they still have it. They still have this colour. They still have peachy pink colour, yellow and tomato red. Faux leather. And let me tell you, this faux leather is absolutely stunning. It has a little bit of stretch to it. It's very, very thin, very fluidy. It sews like an absolute dream. It's, it's gorgeous. Um, so I loved it so much that I went and I bought three further meters of this fabric because I'd like to make either some sort of a jacket or a dress or a trench coat or God knows, something uh, more. I love the color. It's like turquoise blue. It's just, it's gorgeous. Um, so yes, the fabric and the process of sewing with faux leather Perhaps I should make a little review for you, if you like, on sewing with faux leather. I did a little reel um, tutorial on my Instagram, so if you like to see that, go there. Um, this skirt is stunning on the inside. It has darts on the front, further darts and concealed zipper in the back. It is fully lined. Um, it has a waist facing and it has the most, oh, let me just turn it out and show you, it has really lovely slits, really lovely slits on finish in the back. And not just that, it's not just that, it's like every little detail. So if I'm going to go inside the skirt <laughs> and find, I mean, look at even the way that they make you finish your zipper. That's gorgeous, you know? Um, I loved making this. I've learned quite a few bits and pieces about, not about just the skirt making, but about working with faux leather and lining. And you know what, it looks super luxurious. And I wanted to work a few times now and it fits like and it's not tight, it's just literally, it, it repeats the contours of your body. And that's a lined garment. Their drafting is just spectacular. I'm sorry, <laughs> it just is. So um, that was my, like I said, it was my first time making something out of faux leather. I think I've started something here because I want to make all sorts of things now. Um, and I think... I might actually have a go at making some sort of a dress next um, because I have, I'm not going to start showing you fabrics because they're just underneath this cutting table here, but I do have three different colours of faux leather in my stash, which I will be using for sure. So we now come into the last garment of this sew and tell. 
and it is a full fur jacket. It's a full fur jacket. Um, let me see if I can put it on. It has no closures. It is quite roomy. Quite roomy sleeves, quite long sleeves as well. So it's uh, you're supposed to wear it open. I put um, shoulders in there as per the instructions. The pattern is a rosemary jacket by Helper Sew. Let me just show you the inside of it. I chose to line it with this gorgeous, gorgeous matte satin fabric. Um, just to say that both fabrics are from Exeter Fabric Center. Um, <laughs> I've developed quite an, a naughty habit of going there sometimes on my lunch break um, with my friend Amy who actually works in my company and who is an avid sewist like myself but that's for another day, story for another day so me and Amy sometimes look across the room at each other and I'm like do you want to go to the fabric center? she's like yep so we just jump in the car and we just go and we buy the fabric that we pro probably don't need as, as, as you do so anyway <laughs> bit of a detour, sorry um, so this is a full it's beautiful like a dark brown I don't usually do browns but it's just like lovely gorgeous dark brown and it's like a like a like a dark chocolate like a cool cool brown um, and the fabric for the lining is ever so beautiful I think it reminds me of some sort of like a magical tropical forest with some mm, palm trees and some exotic birds in there and all sorts of stuff going on but um, this is what I went for and what I'm going to say about this is I didn't do it right um, somehow for the fact that you can't press it now my boyfriend suggested using the parchment paper for pressing it which is a very clever idea, apart from the fact that I don't want to do it. So I'm I'm fin I'm done with this. This is finished as far as I'm concerned. It's a little lopsided <laughs> um, at the bottom. I don't know. I, I think it looks okay. I think I'm probably just picking on myself really. But I had to hand stitch it so that it lies flat. And I kind of hand stitched all the seam allowances to the main part of the garment flat but when it comes to securing and and you know um under stitching the the uh neck line um neckline yeah uh because you can't really press this fabric you really can't do too much so i had to really do a lot of hand stitching and you know what i'm gonna call it finished And the other day, um, I went to a Danelm department just down the road, and I bought myself a throw um, of fur, fur, fox fur, full fur fabric. And I've decided I'm going to make myself another jacket, not necessarily this one, but for, for the next winter. Not now, but later on. But for now, I'm going to use it as a just as a throw, but for the next winter, it's going to transform itself into the most fabulous jackets um which is the color of this leather skirt that i just made like very similar so i can't wait for that so anyway going back to this um it was an experimental garment will i wear it i think i might actually just chuck it on do you know what i'm gonna go downstairs i'm gonna put it downstairs for me to wear to work tomorrow because at the moment when i jump into the car i don't wear anything on top because it's getting a bit warmer now so i'm just gonna wear this just so that i can say that i want it out um yeah and that's how we roll um children so this is me for my first part of sew and tell thank you so much for listening to all of this and 
for <laughs> welcoming me back into the community. Um, there's obviously much more to come. Um, please let me know what you think about any of this, um, whether you have any comments or criticisms or whatever, you know, praise you, obviously you're ever so lovely, you always, always praise me. But please go ahead and tell me what you think. And I can't wait to see you soon. Thank you again for watching my video. I'm gonna go now. But meanwhile, you stay pretty and sew something amazing. Love you all. Bye.